the offensive. Settle some scores. Catch all the action of the next big volleyball battle at the Gate Center. Go Dons! Welcome back to the Hilliard Gate Sports Center, including our Bow Wow friend. Along with Steve Floyo, Mike Maz, IPFW victorious in game one over Lewis by a score of 30 to 16. Steve, before we talk about game one, we need to say thank you to Big Daddy's Pizza for feeding most of the College 56 crew here this evening. Tasty pizzas and more from Big Daddy's Pizza with locations at the Acme on East State, Clancy's on West Jefferson, and Big Daddy's on DuPont. One thing we noticed, Steve Florio, IPFW hit 444 in game one, and Lewis hit zero. Yeah, IPFW is, is hot right now. They came into this match tonight hot. They've been rolling over opponents. They've been having a lot of fun on the court. I mean, they're just riding high. I mean, it's like a buzzsaw right now, and you just don't want to run into them. And I'm glad they're playing this way. Uh, they have a really tough match. I mean, this is a tough match. Lewis is a strong team. And then tomorrow night they have Ohio State, so they just want to keep driving right through. One of the things we've been talking about in game one is what a well-balanced team IPFW is. And as you look at the stats, I mean, C.J. Macias, three kills. Brock Ulrich, three kills. Josh Collins, three kills. Colin Lundin, three kills. Sadar Sitcha, two kills. Mike Dagger, one kill. Fifteen kills by one, two, three, four, five, six different guys. That's spreading the wealth. I that think. is, and that's a balanced team. It, this is definitely a well-balanced team, and it's a dangerous team to play when they can get help from anywhere. It's a very dangerous team. Jordan Vinovic will serve for Lewis, and the left-hander serves it into the net. There were three service errors by the Flyers in game one. That is number four, and IPFW leads one to nothing. CJ Macias, the Mr. Everything for IPFW, ready to serve. Native Floridian smacks one, and it's in for an ace. Second ace for CJ, second ace for IPFW here tonight. It's 2 nothing, guys. And that serve, however, is wide, and that is service error number six. I don't expect too much of that to change, though. I expect Coach Ball to keep having his servers go after it, say it's okay if you miss, just keep bringing it, because good things are going to happen more than the errors are going to happen. Drew Pickering, again, one of the many freshmen, will serve it up for the Flyers. Nice serve. Lundin, high set for Collins. That is blocked and hits. Okay, that hit the well, uh, speaker system. Yeah, the speaker system counts as part of the ceiling. It hit the speaker system off of one of Lewis players' heads, I think, and then went over IPFW's side. Illegal, automatically out. 3-1 Dons, rather. Brock Ulrich with the serve. Vitovic for Mikolai Zerebek, and Zerebek gets a kill. Uh, stuffs it down in between the IPFW block and the net, which means that the block wasn't pressing over enough, wasn't sealing the net off enough. Alex Vagansky, 6'9", freshman. Tosses it up. Colin Lundin going to set up C.J. Macias. Good night. Oh, is that an overrule? Dan Hauser, the down official, overrules the line judge. Well, the last time Lewis, uh, all the freshmen on the court, Lewis, last time Lewis uh, had a call they weren't happy with, they let about four or five points go after that. So we'll see. They're obviously unhappy with that call. We'll see if they shake it off or if they keep, you know, harping on it for the next three or four points. The point does go to IPFW. It's 4-2, and Sadar Sikcha will serve. Oh, nice short set, and putting it away is David Kellenhofer. And that's a great job by Lewis, just getting the kill and moving on, and now they need to keep driving. Kellenhofer will serve. Pokes it high in the air. And a lift going to be called, I think, yep, on Colin Lundin. Well, what Lundin is saying right now is he's saying, uh, I didn't hold it, I hit it with my knuckles. There's no way the ball could sit if I hit it with my knuckles. We're tied at four. 
Josh Stewart off the hands of Nick Parakis. And, and there's a nice job by PFW. Just, all right, drop the mistake, drop the play. Even if you're unhappy with it, go ahead and, and get the ball right back and keep moving. And here is Lundin going to serve now. Battle at the net. Cowens dug out. That time by Pickering. Oh, nice play by Kalnhofer. Well, that's a great swing. It was a low set. He had to drop his elbow and almost swing sidearm and just punch it through. It's a very nice kill by Kalnhofer. We're tied at five here in game two. IPFW won game one by a score of 30 to 16. And it was a nice job by Vitovic, by the way, on that overpass, slowing the uh, overpass attack down. Sarah Beck serving. Stewart, change of pace off the hand of Sahagian and out of the floor for an IPFW point. Stands up by one. Josh Cowens to serve. You got Pickering on the outside. You got Sahagian on the right. It would be a smart move to keep the block split. Whoa. It is just wide, I believe. Just a touch long as well, very close to the corner line, but it is a service error. It's a Hagian with the jump serve. Here's the set. Oh, nice block that time by Vagansky. Ulrich off the touch onto the floor. Bit of a tried, but he, you mentioned it, Steve. Jordan at a disadvantage being only six foot tall. Yeah, it's it's just a. It's just a matter of numbers, you know. I mean, you got a, a good tall outside hitter and Brock Ulrich uh, attacking against a, a six-foot setter with an average vertical. Lundin going to set up Macias. Oh, nice tag team block. As that time, it's Pickering and Vagansky combining for the block. I tell you. Again, Pickering doesn't play like he's 5'11". It's sort of fun to see for all, for all us short guys out there. <laughs> Vitovic starts the second rotation of serves for the Flyers. Macias at the net, and CJ says enough is enough. You know, and that's a nice job by Colin Lundin. You don't see that all too often in volleyball anymore these days. It's sort of an old-school type play. If your hitter gets blocked, give him the ball again let him redeem himself. And I would say he redeemed himself. Macias with the jump serve. Wow, wow, back It looked like Vitovic was just waiting for the player to come into his, his reach. And Vitovic is a back row player, so he got called on it earlier in the match. He's not allowed to try and block that ball. Best thing he can do is just hope that it hits his hands while he's below the height of the net. Good serve by Macias. Good block by Sikcha. Vitovic. Can Cowan save it? No. Kelnhofer will get credit for the kill off the touch. Lewis hanging tough here in game two. They trail by just one, nine to eight. Drew Pickering at 5'11. Native of Wisconsin with the long jump serve. He's really smoking that serve tonight. Short set, six to uh, see you later. Off the hand of Pickering and a point for the Nuns. It is a great pass by PFW. Uh, very, very nice job of keeping that ball in system, keeping it right on Lundin's head so he can run his middles or set to the outside. It really breaks down the block of Lewis when, you're, when your team's in system. Service error by Brock Aldrich. Makes it 10 to 9. Don's lead trimmed to 1. Uh, Lewis catches a break there, in my opinion. Uh, Aldrich ran about 6, 7, or 8 points last time he had the serve in last last game. So to get out without scoring any points is... Uh, is a break for Lewis. Tom Garvey off the bench and to serve for the Flyers. Set by Lundin and Sikcha in the middle puts it away. And you see these passes, uh, if they were if they were on Lewis's side, they might be a little tougher for the setter on Lewis Vitovic to handle because they're they're almost going over the net. But Lundin has such incredible jumping ability, he can bring the ball back. Sikcha with that floating serve from the backcourt. Free ball opportunity coming up for IPFW. Lundin for Stewart. Josh smacks it right at the hands of Nick Parakis. And the Valley Don lead increases to three at 12 to nine. As long as IPFW can keep running those middles, 
with the good passing, they're going to be in really good shape because eventually when they have to sling that ball out to the outside, the block's going to be a one-on-one -on -one because they have to stay with IPFW's middles. Kellen Hoffer will get the point off the hands of Sadar Sikcha. That's a great kill. Uh, hitting the ball down the line with pace is a very hard dig for the defense. It's a great kill by Kellen Hoffer. I have to ask you, Steve, we'll get into this next couple of points. Lewis played like they were sleeping in game one. Flyers now getting accustomed to the floor and playing better in game two, although well, let's, not forget they, the let's not forget they, they showed up here 645. Well, that was the point I was eventually going yeah. to get to. 13-10, Cowan Lunding to serve. The Don's up by three. They showed up 15 minutes ahead of when they had actually be starting the match. That leaves them enough time to get changed and get a little sweat going. IPFW with the point as Pickering's kill attempt is wide. They're playing a lot better this, this game, though. Another jump serve for the IPFW setter. Wow. Collins with a look what I found. Dig, but his push attempt is a little strong. Well, the set was tight. He had to do something with it. If he swung, he would have hit the net. He did, it was all he could to, to stay out of the net. Just trying to maybe tap it into the corner or get hands with it. Zerabek with the jump serve. Lundin setting up Macias on the left side. Oh, nice play that time. Kellenhofer kept it alive. Another set. Stewart just inside the court. And it's 15-11, and we've got timeout on the court. We'll take one as well. Valley Dons lead by four. Back with YPSW Volleyball in a moment right here on College 56 Sports. Do you have everything you need? Paper? Pencils? We only ask that you do your best. And make you a snack. Back at the gate set, we see a replay. And, and that's an example of being able to run your middle hitters. Uh, when you can get the ball to your middle hitters, your overall offense is going to improve. One, because the middle hitters are tall and big and can hit the ball down, but later in the game that'll pay dividends by making the other team's middle blocker stay with you. So right now, uh, you know, Coach from Lewis is saying to his middles, you got to get in front of Josh Stewart. you got to get in front of IPFW's middles. And in doing that, Lundy can start to switch it up and throw it to the other hitters. There'll be a single block because the middles will be staying with them. Thus far in game two, IPFW hitting at a torrid pace, 588. Lewis not so bad themselves at 400. Action to continue. Josh Collins will serve. Vitovic setting up Kaunhofer. Let's see what that's called. IPFW will get the point. I'm not sure if it was a net violation. Well, he was saying it was a net violation. Actually, he was saying it was a center line violation. Which means is? He stepped over the middle of the court. There's a line running down right below the net. And you're not allowed to step over it. He said he did. Service ace for Josh Cowens. That's the third IPFW ace of the night. First by Josh. Two others were by C.J. Macias. And there it is. There's the tough serving, getting a point for IPFW. And aces uh, are one way of getting points. But even if you force a bad pass from Lewis, it's going to allow your block to have more of an advantage. Wow, that time... Pickering really got up in the air and Drew came away with his fifth kill of the night. You know, uh, a hitter like Pickering is going to make his, make his living hitting down the line and hitting sharp angles. Uh, he's just not big enough to go through a big block. But uh, he, I don't want to take anything away from him. He can fly and he can swing. And he just needs to keep slamming it down the line when he can and getting it off hands. Vitovic going to set up Pickering again. And again... 
Drew Pickering comes through. Well, and there, there uh, from my perspective, C.J. Macias recognized Pickering's ability to slam it down the line. He got right on the antenna, but by doing that, opened a hole in the block that Pickering just popped it right through. Two flyer points in a row. And then a server's worst nightmare hitting it right into the net. In my opinion, though, I'd rather take away the line shot by blocking line and letting the hitter hit cross court. There's more diggers cross court, and even if you have a digger down the line, it's just a really hard dig to make. That ball's coming about 12 feet away at about a 70, 80 miles an hour. Collins with the dig. Brock Ulrich puts it away. For example, right there. I mean, you just got to hope that ball hits you and goes up because from that short a distance, I bet the ball's traveling 70, 80 miles an hour easily. 19-13 the score, IPFW ahead. Downs won game one, 30-16 as they search for consecutive match victory number 15. Vitovic for Pickering. And that's going to your bread and butter. Drew Pickering now has seven kills. That leads the way for Lewis. And Pickering had a single block there. Sitcha stayed with the Lewis's middle hitter. Uh, which left a one-on-one -on -one situation, and the advantage always goes to the hitter when you have a one-on-one -on -one situation. Nice angle. Pickering again, and that hits the pole. It'll be IPFW's point. The antennas, the red and white striped antennas coming up from the net represent the sideline, and uh, if the ball hits the antenna, it's automatically out of bounds. C.J. Macias to serve for IPFW. Ball was played. Chance for IPFW here. Macias on the right side. And that whole rally began with the tough serve because even though it wasn't an ace, the best Lewis could do with that pass, it was a bad pass, it was an okay set, the best they could do was roll it back over, and basically that's, that's money in the bank for IPFW. Pass the setter and slam it. Well, CJ Macias has two kills, but he's also committed a number of service errors. Substitution for Lewis. Number 12 is Craig Bowler, a 6'8 freshman. Also out of Bartlett, Illinois. Freshman everywhere here for Lewis. Boy, and how, but just think of the experience they're gaining now. How oh, tough yeah. they'll be in two or three years. Definitely. Lundin for Macias. Pickering couldn't reach it. And it's now 22-15 in favor of IPFW. You see, it's had a nice hole in the block to hit through, and that's due in part to the great connection between Lundin and his middle hitters. Lewis has no choice but to front IPFW's middles, which means there's most likely going to be a one-on-one -on -one situation. Miscommunication between Vagansky and Pickering, and the result is a service ace for Brock Ulrich. Timeout called by Lewis. Flyers trail 23-15. Join coach Arnie Ball on College 56 for the Arnie Ball Show with highlights and perspective from the head coach and his guest. Host Mark Franke opens up the show. It can be seen Tuesday evenings at 10.30, Fridays at 6.30, or Saturday mornings at 11.30. Again, that's the Arnie Ball Show. Catch it right here on College Cable Access Channel 56. And Steve, Arnie, and Mark are uh, hurting a little bit because I'm going to be their special guest this next week. <laughs> They're probably very excited about that, Mike. They have a great show. It's a lot of fun to watch. If they haven't seen it, I say tune in. They're a bunch of characters. And you see another side of Coach Ball that you, you don't always see here on the court. You know that I can't tell a joke, and I just have a riot listening to the Mutt and Jeff of college volleyball. Oh, yeah. They've been working together a long time. They play off one another really well. Well, IPFW now with, again, a somewhat commanding lead, 23-15. They just need to take care of business but still keep focused. That's right. That's exactly it. They just need to keep driving, keep serving tough, um, setting those blocks up, running the middles. Basically, business as usual, what they've been doing all, all night so far. Although I thought it was a good timeout by Lewis. So uh, keep, it, keep it within range, try and rein it back in a bit. Boy, a good serve just over the net. Maurice keeps it alive for the Dons. Here's the setup, and Josh Collins puts it away. And there's that one-on-one -on -one situation we're talking about again. Actually, this time, two blockers jumped with Sitcha, 
leaving again a one-on-one -on -one situation. And as I've said many, many times, it's an uh, advantage to the attacker when he only has one blocker on him. 24-15, IPFW on top. Another good serve by Brock Ulrich. Vaganski asking for a touch, and Rod no. Rodriguez says no. No, the ball just bounced off the top of the net. Again, Lewis University playing with a multitude of freshmen. No seniors on the squad. Vitovic, and that hits the pole. An attempt by Craig Bowler. And again, Lewis is stuck on Brock Ulrich's serve. They called a timeout. That didn't do it. They made a sub. That didn't do it. Uh, what, what they might want to think about, what uh, Dan Friend might want to think about, coach of Lewis, is maybe rolling his lineup a little bit to get a different matchup on that service. Vitovic, wow, is it in? No, it is wide. I'm just amazed how high Drew Pickering gets up in the air, Steve. Oh, uh, he flies. It's, he's a lot of fun to watch. I'm enjoying watching him play tonight. He is not as only, not only does he jump high, but he brings it, man. He really swings for the fences. Serve a little strong, a little long that time by Brock Ulrich. It's a serve that we first saw last week. Yeah, he's been working on it. He's been working on it. It's a nice serve. It actually gets him further into the court. He's actually hit that ball about five feet inside the end line when it's all said and done with his jump and the lead of the toss. Vagansky serving for Lewis, trailing by 11. CJ Macias, oh, that time. Vagansky keeps it alive. And that time, sick jet set up. Cowan Lundin. And then, there you go, Lundin. Great net play, net play by a setter. setter. It's an intangible. It's an intangible. It's just another, it's a bonus to have that in your setter. It's one of the things teams have to, opponents have to recognize when they come to play at PFW is uh, most teams bank on getting a few kills by hitting over the setter or by him not being able to handle a tight pass. Lundin just stopped. <laughs> And wow, Steve, he's hit me. Uh, he basically heard me uh, talking about him. And there you see his ability to block. I mean, he is an exceptional blocker for any position, let alone the center position. Michael Quinones. It's like Seven having a pitcher who can hit. <laughs> Kellen Hoffer. Quinones with the dig. Lundin for Mike Dyga. Off the net, off the touch, point, and game two goes to IPFW by a score of 30 to 16. Just as game one went 30 to 16. We will take a break. Steve and I will return. It's the mandatory 10 minute break between games two and three. IPFW. Oh, yes, to the 30, to the 50, to the 40. Oh, damn, he's going down the sideline, and it's up. If legislation being considered now in the U.S. Congress passes, you won't see your local team or your government or local events and news on this TV channel. Telecom giants want to end the funding source for this and other local channels. And with such action, end your rights to watch or produce local programming. Don't let local access become Won't See TV. Go to SaveMyFreeSpeech.net or AllianceCM.org now and learn how you can help. Become informed and contact your representatives in Washington. The time for your action is now. Otherwise, this is all you'll see here soon. Pizza! Pizza! Oh, I must eat. No way. What is this? Capsicum Anna? Agaricus Bisporus? Huh? Allium Sepa? Can we eat it? Peppers, mushrooms, and onions. Eat your pizza, man. Funny. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. <laughs> Welcome back 
again to the Hilliard Gate Sports Center, everybody, along with IPFW Women's Assistant Volleyball Coach Steve Floyo. This is Mike Moss. We are in the, uh, you want to call it halftime for volleyball, the 10 minute break that takes place between games two and three of every volleyball match. See youngsters trying to put together the puzzle on the floor. Teams have gone back to their respective locker rooms. IPFW thus far in total control of this match. Winning games one and two by identical scores of 30 to 16. Dons got out of the gate real quickly in game one. Jumped to a 13 to three lead and never looked back. Game two, Lewis playing more competitive. Actually had the match tied at seven. And it was a 12-10 score, and then IPFW pulled away to win by 30-16. to We're going to see some statistics showing up here on your screen momentarily. IPFW leading in kills, 33-16. to Don's hitting 519 as opposed to 019 for the Lewis Flyers. Assists favor IPFW, 28-6. The blocks are 6-2 in favor of the home team. And the Valley Dons have outdug the Lewis Flyers 19 to 15. Steve mentioned a moment ago, and he'll be back with us momentarily, that uh, IPFW has spread the wealth, so to speak, and uh, so to speak rather, in terms of the offense. Individually leading the way is C.J. Macias. That's not uh, unusual. Seven kills, six kills for Brock Ulrich, five apiece for Josh Collins and Josh Stewart. Four apiece for Cowan Lundin and Sadar Sikcha, and two kills for Mike Daiga. Lewis is led by Drew Pickering. Pickering at 5'11", freshman from Wauwatosa, Wisconsin, who's got springs in his legs. Pickering has seven kills, four kills apiece for Nikolai Zerebek and David Kellenhofer, and one kill for Alex Vagansky. From a setting standpoint, Cowan Lundin with 25 assists. 16 assists for Jordan Vitovic. IPFW with four service aces to none for Lewis. Ten service errors. That's something that Arnie Ball and Dennis Johnson will talk about in the locker room. No aces, five serving errors for Lewis. The digs, 19-15 as we said. Seven digs for Mike Marisi, the IPFW libero. Five for Josh Collins. Five digs for Nick Paracas, the libero for Lewis, and four digs for Drew Pickering. And IPFW excelling in the block department. Team-wise, it's six to two. One solo block for IPFW, that came from Sadar Sikcha. 10 block assists, no solo blocks, and just four block assists for Lewis. And all the numbers point to IPFW in command. And it's again a 2-0 lead for IPFW. We're going to take another break. When we come back, we'll look at highlights from the first two games and talk about more IPFW action. Again, IPFW leads two games to none. Back with more volleyball in a moment right here on College 56 Sports. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents. Factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales. You're looking at 2400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Do you know IPFW has its very own pet band? The Stop Band is working for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, stop. Happy spring! It's time to think of chocolate eggs and Easter bunnies. And we're thinking about children in town who would like to be a part of the fun. We're the alumni directors of the area colleges and universities. Each year we adopt an area school and provide filled Easter baskets for all the students. We need 500 baskets. Please consider donating filled wrapped Easter baskets for this very worthy cause. Remember all the items in the basket need to be wrapped and not homemade. Then the entire basket should be wrapped. You can drop off your baskets up until April 6th at any one of our colleges or universities. With your help we'll make 500 children spring at bed brighter this year. 
welcome back once again to the Hilliard Gates Sports Center. That's Athletic Director Mark Pope with the uh, blue shirt and tie on the right side of your screen. Again, we're in the intermission between games two and three here of our match featuring Lewis University and IPFW. Valley Dons winning games one and two by identical scores of 30 to 16. We will see some highlights here momentarily, we think, from the first two games of this match. Again, Lewis got here a little bit late. That's why this match, the start of the match, was delayed by some 15 minutes. And uh, here we go. You see Josh Stewart, 6'8", sophomore, serving for IPFW. With that long float serve. And you see Sikcha, Sadar Sikcha at the net with the block. We mentioned IPFW is on a 14-match winning streak. Another play there by Brock Ulrich at the net. Everybody contributing. The set, the kill again by Sikcha. The dig by Mike Morisi there in blue. The little tap by Lundin and another point for IPFW. We mentioned this is a corkscrew type serve by Brock Ulrich. And again, the Don's putting it away there. I want to thank our crew back. Uh, Behind the scenes for making these highlights possible. Lundin with another block at the net. And during this 14 match winning streak, as Steve has mentioned, it's been a combination serving, passing, blocking, and everybody contributing. Lundin with the set. Macias with the kill. And another good block at the net, Macias and Stewart. Marisi keeping that play alive. Lundin with the set. Macias with the kill. And thus far, everything going IPFW's way. Steve Florio rejoins us now. And Steve, we know that you got a lot of things to do here besides helping us out in the broadcast. <laughs> Part of your role as assistant coach for the women's team is working with potential recruits. And that's right. We know that you're working with the recruit. We're seeing some highlights from games one and two. And it's, it's been basically complete domination by IPFW in all facets of the game. Absolutely. That's the best way to put it. And again, going on the whole team effort thing, it really has been. I mean, uh, I'm going to run down a list again. C.J. Macias has seven kills. Brock Ulrich has six kills. Josh Collins has five. Kyle Lundin has four. Sidar Sitcha has four. Josh Stewart has five. I mean, who do you stop? Who do you stop if you're Lewis? you got to stop five guys. It's just not possible. Pick your poison. IPFW will serve to start uh, game three. Boy, look at those two. Ugly faces there. <laughs> you got the more handsome face, my friend. We're losing viewers uh, <laughs> every second they leave this on the screen. Arnie There's Ball a good-looking guy that just walked past yeah. with a good haircut, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh. IPFW will serve first here in game three. And, Steve, we've talked about this again many times. The team is up two games to none. You're fearful of a letdown. The team down two games to none can freewheel it because they have nothing to lose. That's right. That's right. You don't have anything to lose. You're down two games to none. Your back's against the wall. You lose another one, you're out. So just swing for the fences. Just go for it. And, you know, it actually makes the team more ferocious. It makes them tougher to play. And if you're IPFW, you just want to keep pushing. You don't want to look at that lead and think, oh, I can rest, I can relax a little. Because it's a bad combination, a team that's going to go all out and a team that's going to relax, bad combination. Here we go, Josh Stewart with the serve. Game three is underway. Sikcha going to set up C.J. Macias. And it is one nothing Dines as Macias plants it between Vitovic number 33 and Pickering number 22. Again, this is a critical match in terms of the MIVA standings. IPFW starts tonight one half game out of first behind Loyola of Chicago. Sick shot at the net, puts it home. Another example 
of the tough serving yielding tough passes. Again, another ball that Vidovic can't, can do nothing about. He's back row. He's not allowed to turn and block that ball. He basically has to let IPFW have their way with it. That time, Lundin keeps it alive. Collins to Brock Ulrich. Ulrich is the top of the tape, and it comes back. So it'll go point Lewis. And the Flyers now trail 2-1. to one. And it'll be Pickering to serve. Just five feet, 11 inches tall. He can get up in the air. He's got a great arm. Patty cake, patty cake. Pickering keeps it alive for Lewis. Again, battle at the net, and the Dons win it. Macias and Sikcha finally prevail. And again, Vidovic just struggling with those tight passes on the tape. They're tough to handle. Uh, a pass that's really close to the net or really almost close to going the other side is a very tough pass to handle. The taller your setter is or the higher you can jump, the easier, little easier it becomes. Lewis, a little bit uh, mixed up. And it's 4-1 as you see Arnie Ball. They need to just uh, let loose right now and, and, and not, not worry about being perfect, just worry about getting after it. A little strong on that serve by CJ. and He's got the pop in the serve as you get a look at Dan Friend. Second year head coach of the Flyers. Alex Vagansky, the 6'9 freshman from Kenosha to serve. Another good pass. Lundin flips it around. Dug out by the Flyers. Ulrich with the dig. And a lift going to be called on Josh Collins. Double hit. Double hit. Which uh, basically means that the rule in volleyball is you're not allowed to hit the ball two times in a row. And on the set, it just happens really fast. It hits the right hand, and then the left hand. And even though it's really fast, it's still two times in a row. Therefore, it's a double hit. Pagansky serving for a tie here in game three. The Flyers try to keep it alive. And there's some of that power we mentioned from C.J. Macias. And C.J. Macias is in the back row, and you see he's standing in the middle of the court right now. Uh, the line he, that is right in front of him is called the attack line, and when he jumps, he has to jump from behind that line if he's one of three back row players. He can fly, and he's just as dangerous from the back row as he is from the front row. Macias with the dig. Collins on the left side, and that is blocked by Kelhofer. Sick shot. Wow. Wow, that is a great set. I tell you, the relationship between the center, Cowan Lundin, and the senior, Sadar Sikchi, this year has been phenomenal. Uh, it's, uh, and also Josh Stewart. I mean, one thing Lundin has done is he, he was struggling early on in the season setting his middle hitters. And over the course of this winning streak and this season, he's really done a great job, a really great job of connecting with his middles better. Sadar Sikchi with the block in the middle. And it's seven to three, Volley Duns. That's eight blocks for IPFW. Ernie Ball with some words of wisdom. As a team, IPFW is hitting 484. Uh, I often compare it to batting average. 300 is very good. So imagine, imagine a batter hitting 484. Well, as Lundin gets that kill, timeout is called. We'll take one as well. Don's up by five. You're watching IPFW Volleyball on College 56 Sports. Are you in there? What's up? The show's a seven. Back at the gate, sir, you see a replay. And that, there's an example right there. That was a tough serve. The libero had trouble handling that serve, and that was the beginning of the chain reaction. It was a bad pass, a bad set, miscommunication, a bad play, and a kill. So in the stat books, there'll be no records of that serve as far as being an ace or a good serve. So, you know, if you're looking at just aces, it's not always indicative of exactly how tough a team is serving. 
uh, because that yielded that yielded a point just as well as an ace could have. Vitovic, and that time Philly Sahagian comes through with the kill off the touch, and it's now eight to four. Flyers trail by four. David Kellenhofer to serve. And that was wicked off the hand of Collins. I guess that technically goes in as an ace. That's an ace. That's an ace. Uh, one of the misconceptions is the ball has to hit the ground straight with it being an ace. Like a tennis. Really, like a tennis. Right. Yeah. Really, an ace in volleyball is just uh, a pass at the setter, can't get to, and, and a, a point results from that. Vitovic setting up Kellenhofer, and you had a three-man block there at the net. The law firm of one Dean, six year and Collins put that one away. Yeah. Yeah. That now, is now 10 blocks for IPFW. Uh, classically known as a blocking team, Coach Ball is a great teacher of the skill. It's one of the most difficult skills in the sport, if not the most difficult skill in the sport to master. And his team always does a great job with it. Lundin Stewart with another block. And of course, that is what IPFW has been famous for the last yeah. several years. And I'll tell you, it helps having a setter who can do it. It really helps it. Because like I was saying before, a lot of times teams figure, all right, we'll get a few kills by hitting over the setter. You are not hitting over Colin Lundin. No way. Kellenhofer, that time it's off the hands of Sikcha. Sudan not happy with himself, muttering something in Turkish. Makes the score 10 to 6. Lewis swinging really nice when they get that opportunity to hit down the line. They need to keep going for that line shot, trying to tool off the block. They haven't had all that many tool kills. And that time and that's a tool kill, kill right there. Basically, when you deflect it, when you use the block, when you hit the block and deflect the shot, that's uh, the slang term for that in volleyball is tool, uh, using the block. And that is a very hard shot to defend. And something Lewis needs to look to do more. Good serve by Lundin just over the net. Good dig by Ulrich. Another dig by Brock. Lundin gets it over, and it uh, explained that it, the ball didn't go over the same direction. It was outside the antenna. It was inside the antenna. Wait. And it went over. Well, what, 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 what happened there uh, is the ball was dug over and over the net onto Lewis's side. And there's a rule called the pursuit rule where you're allowed to chase the ball down as long as you run outside the court. But you have to bring the ball back inside the court. Uh, you have to bring the ball back out around the outside of the antenna, and the ball didn't come back around the outside of the antenna. So it's a little confusing. Josh Stewart just hammered one off the shoulder of Craig Bowler. It's a, it's a little confusing rule there. Mm -hmm. But I think the officials got it right. And that, with that last play... Steve has been the hallmark of this winning streak. The Dons lose a point, they come right back yep. and get the next point. Yep. And it's a young team, too, which is uh, great. <laughs> it's great because it's a young team. They're able to shake off mistakes. And usually that's more of a quality of a veteran team. Vitovic with that left-handed serve. Ulrich on the left side, and he pounces on it for the point. Again, Ulrich having a nice hole to hit through. And the thing is, Lundin has just mixed his sets up. He's been setting his middles for a bit, then slinging it out to the outsides and throwing it to the back row. It's a balanced attack, and Lewis just, there's no tendencies right now for Lewis to pick up on. Stewart with a dink. It's still alive. Macias with a dink shot. Kellenhofer blocked. Sick shot with a little help from C.J. Macias. And again, as I mentioned uh, in the pregame, C.J. Macias was an outside hitter the last time they played Lewis, mm -hmm. which means he was blocking on the left side. And this is a team that really, Lewis is a team that really relies on their outside hitters. So to put C.J. in front of the, the hitters that get the most sets, now you're putting a very good blocker in front of the majority of the sets. It's a good combination. And that last play, but the there's a tool kill in that last mm -hmm. play. And that is an undefendable play. Hit it off the block, bounce it out of bounds. Pickering to serve. And he has been the what bright spot pass. for Lewis tonight. Wow, did David Kellenhofer get up in the air. The 6'6 freshman out of Waukesha, Wisconsin. 
denied IPFW the point there, and it's 14-10. One thing Lewis has shown is their ability to hit down the line tonight. I mean, they've been cranking it down the line, and they want to keep trying to do that. One of the advantages of banging it down the line is you do have an opportunity to tool the block. And again, IPFW works the middle, and Chick Chick comes up with the kill. Mm -hmm. Sort of like football. If you think about football, you run, 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 then pass. Pass, 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 then run. And you just keep the team, the opponent, off guard. And that's what uh, IPFW is doing a nice job of, is just mixing it up. Not getting into any predictable routine. Off the touch. It is now 16-10 in favor of the Dons. IPFW, as a team, has 42 kills. Not one hitter is in double digits. I mean, that wow. is remarkable. Macias high in the air. Howitzer for a serve. Sikcho with another block at the net. And this has just got to be eaten up. Timeout called by Lewis. 17 10 our score. We're back with YPFW Volleyball in a moment right here on College of Six Sports. Next time on Nick Allen's Extreme Show with Nick Allen, just in time for tax season, we have a visit from financial guru Harlow P. Winterbottom. Also, Dr. Leonard W. Beiswanger will be taking your questions on gray matters. As always, Nick Allen's Extreme Show is brought to you by WAFT, the cologne for white-collar workers who want and demand that blue-collar smell. Nick Allen's Extreme Show can now be seen right here in Fort Wayne on College 56, Saturdays at 9.30 p.m. Back at the Hilliard Gate Sports Center, Steve Florio, Mike Moss here, IPFW, leading game three over Lewis, 17-10. The Dons beat the Flyers in games one and two by identical scores of 30-16. to Steve, we're seeing a replay here. It's a tough pass leading to a tough set and a block. And it's starting from the passing, I mean, that's volleyball. If you come and ask me what the most important part of the volleyball game is, it's the first contact, it's the pass. It's the pass. If the pass is good, your team's going to have a much better opportunity on the attack. If the pass is bad, you're going to struggle to get the ball back over the net in an aggressive fashion. And in the short set, but the kill attempt uh, by Vigansky is wide. Makes our score 18-10 in favor of IPFW. C.J. Macias, nine kills and two digs, will continue to serve. Vitovic setting up Pickering, and for Drew Pickering now, that is kill number 10. We'll show up on our screen in a moment. And uh, Pickering is actually leading the all, t all players in kills. Yet his team is hitting zero. In fact, uh, for the match, it is 42-21. IPFW has doubled the kill attempt amount of uh, Lewis. Service error that time. One of the things that I mean by saying that IPFW has 42 kills and no one is in double digits on IPFW is what's remarkable about that is it's just showing what balance IPFW has. Brock Arwich with a service ace. And then if you're, say, Ohio State coming in tomorrow night, you want to scout the other team, and you look for the one or two big guns on a team, and you go, okay, well, Macias, last night when he played Lewis, he had 20 kills, and then the rest of the team had three and four apiece. And uh, so we're going to block Macias. Another service ace. Ulrich leads this team overall for the season in kills and back-to-back -back aces there and it's 21-11. You know, and when you look at IPFW's kills and everyone's got seven, six, eight, nine, and you're Ohio State or whoever the opponent is coming up, you say, uh, who do we block? We gotta block everyone. There's a dig by Macias, Sixcha again, and IPFW is just uh, enjoying target practice right now. You know, think about it in football. If a team has four wide receivers all doing a great job receiving passes, you can't double team anyone. It's like a basketball, t basketball team that has five great scorers. Who do you defend? You've got to defend them all. Uh, a little lack of concentration by Brock Ulrich that time, taking his eye off the ball and serving it not even to the net. Served it to Sikcha instead. 22-12. Flyers going to try to mount a comeback. However, that attempt is long. 
And in comes Mike Daiga. He's going to be playing middle for Josh Stewart. And Michael Quinones is going to come in to serve. And IPFW wanting to uh, put the pedal to the metal and end this match in a hurry. That's right. Quinones has a nice jump serve. And at times, he is the backup setter. And at times, he'll come in and he'll actually set and Lundin will play the role of an offensive player. Off the touch, Drew Pickering. And boy, we've mentioned his name a lot tonight. Ten kills, seven digs. And uh, he has been the offensive star. Oh, he has got an arm. I tip my hat to him. He can play some volleyball. 5'11", no big deal. He flies and he can swing. Flyers come back with another point. Two in a row, and they cut the lead to nine. It's 23-14. Actually, a shorter player, like a 5'11 men's mm -hmm. player who can jump and fly, They're, it's a different type of player to block because usually they're up in the air for quite some time. And uh, there's a little bit of different timing on the block. Josh Collins with the kill. IPFW now just six points away from a match victory. Cowan Lundino serve and time permitting, hopefully, Steve, if things work out, perhaps we can get a chance to speak with Cowan Lundin after this match is over. Although he serves that one into the net, that won't make Arnie Ball or Denny Johnson happy. Uh, but they, they've been getting such good results from their tough serves. I think they're, I mean, you're never happy about a service error, but I think overall they've got to be happy with how they've broken Lewis's passing down with the tough serve. And so you're gonna, it's going to cost you a few errors. Billy Sahagian with the serve for Lewis. C.J. Macias. That ball still alive off the net, but it's going to be a point for IPFW. And a lot of smiles on the, name of the players of IPFW. They lead 25-15. And it's nice to see that IPFW is not relaxing here. They're bringing it like they brought it in games one and games two. You want to you wanna exit this game hot. Another service error. Because tomorrow night, if you're IPFW, you got Ohio State. And the last time they played, it was a war. Mm -hmm. Went five, 15-13 in game five at Ohio State. Tomorrow night's going to be a war. So you want to go hot. You want to finish just rip-roaring. Another point for IPFW as the Lewis block is wide. And more substitutions. Jason Hemphill in. Sadar Sikcha in. And Jason Hemphill, a 6'4 junior from North Pole, Alaska, will serve. Again, the Dons four points away from their 15th consecutive match victory. We have Mike Dyker yeah, back sorry. here serving. And he's been developing this little jump float you're about to see. Tips tough, the net. Serve. But it's still alive. Another block. Sikcha and Macias say no way to David Kellenhofer. And that's, that's 14 blocks for IPFW. That's nine. Nine for Sadar Sikcha. One more, that's 10 blocks, that's, that's remarkable. Service ace by the senior from Columbus, Ohio. That's a tough serve to pass. It's moving at a good speed, it's staying chest height, it's gonna hit the, hit the passes in the shoulder. And uh, you know, as a senior, it's interesting to be developing new techniques uh, halfway through your senior season. Vitovic setting up. Pickering, and I think that was touched. That should be a Lewis point, and it is. Flyers trying to mount the rally of rallies. And, uh, yeah. Well, CJ Macias has popped into the double-digit uh, kills with 11. The only player on IPFW to have double digits. Pickering serves it into the net, and we are at match point. 29-17, C.J. Macias getting ready to serve, brought on his feet. Good look at the sophomore from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The jump serve. High in the air, Vitovic sets it up. Beeler hits it into the net, and this match is over. IPFW making quick work the Lewis Flyers tonight, winning game three, 30 to 17, winning the match three games to none. It is now 15 and counting, the number of consecutive victories by IPFW. More importantly, Steve, they improved to eight and two in MIVA play.
We'll talk more about that when we have our post-match report. Players shaking hands. We will take a break. When we come back, Steve and I will talk about the match, and we hope to have perhaps a player and a coach as well. Valley Don's victorious. Three games to none. You're watching IPSW Volleyball on College 56 Sports. Do you know IPFW has its very own pep band? The Stop Band is looking for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, stop. Mom, Dad, you know we love kids and I've made a decision that will totally change my life. Cameron's too. It's a huge responsibility leading someone into, who knows, communication or science or math. That's what life's all about, right? Learning so you can pass on knowledge to younger minds. Dad, Mom, I want to be a teacher. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. <laughs> Sports Center is you see some highlights from this now recently completed match IPFW putting the pedal to the metal and taking care of Lewis University tonight winning in straight sets 30-16 30-16 and 30 to 17 again IPFW in the white uh, jerseys Lewis in the red Big block. Again, this is action from game three. And uh, again, the Don's victorious. We are joined by Cowan Lundin, junior setter out of Victoria, British Columbia. Great match tonight, Cowan. Talk about this match first. Uh, this was a great match for us. We're just happy to uh, get, a, get a chance to beat these guys. They put a beating on us earlier in the season. We played pretty bad against them, so it's nice to come out and show that we are the better team. You mentioned back in January they defeated you at their court three games to one. Uh, what did Coach put on the drawing board this week in preparation for this match? It was, he, he didn't want to make it seem like, oh, this is our revenge time. It was just something, this is part of our season. This is what we need to do to get where we need to be at the end of the season. So, Steve, any questions for Cowan? Uh, you've done a nice job of distributing the ball to all the different hitters. Has that been sort of a master plan by Coach Ball? It's Yeah, we've sort of gone back and forth with different things all year, trying to figure out where I need to get the ball and when. And so things are coming together now. Um, I'm getting the ball to more players more often, getting the middles involved in the game a lot more, so it's helping out. Well, it shows. I mean, earlier at the beginning of this winning streak, you guys were really uh, leaning on CJ. You know, he's getting 20, 30 kills a match. Mm -hmm. Now, tonight he only had 11, and everyone had around like 7 and 8 apiece, and I think it's really making a difference. Yeah. And uh, has, have you been working on your connection with the middles? Because that seems to really we, be we on a, right now. Yeah, we put a lot of time into just spreading on the offense in, in practices. And so our passing has improved a lot, which is giving me the opportunity to get, get the middles involved in the offense, <laughs> which is a huge thing. And you don't have to run around as much, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm not quite as tired as I used <laughs> to be. Kyle, when you were a transfer from mm -hmm. Canada, what has the experience playing here in the States been like? Oh, it's been great for me. It's it's a lot different. Back home, I played in a junior college in front of maybe like 50, 60 fans a night. And so just the atmosphere here is huge. The volleyball is such a big sport in Fort Wayne. It's a lot of fun to play. 15 in a row and counting. Yeah. Uh, perhaps more importantly, a conference victory here tonight. You started play a half game behind Loyola. Loyola was playing Ohio State. We don't know how that match turned mm -hmm. out. Buckeyes come into town tomorrow night. 
let's look ahead briefly to that match because you guys literally stole one from them in Columbus yeah. several weeks ago. Down two games to none, coming back to win 15-13 uh, in game five. Yeah, that was... We, we showed up to their gym, and we were ready to go, but sort of fell apart early on in game one, lost the first two games, and then stepped up a little. It wasn't a pretty game to say anything, but but yeah, we stepped up, pulled off the victory, and so we're going to be looking to to win a little quicker tomorrow night. They're, they're a good team, though. Injuries all year, so we don't know who's going to be playing for them, but we're just going to be prepared for whatever comes. So then it's doubly important that you took care of business here tonight, winning the match in three. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it's... Right, right now it's coming down to the end of the season hosting the MIBA championships probably between us and Loyola and so we need to win quickly every night need to win in three just to give ourselves a shot because of our early season loss to Lewis. Well we appreciate you giving us a little bit of time and congratulations on a, a good victory tonight. Thank you. It's 15 and counting you never know the sky's the limit but uh, keep it going. It goes. All right thank you. We've been we've been chatting with Cowan Lundin the junior center from British Columbia We'll take another break, and when we come back, we hope to have head coach Arnie Ball with us as well. Again, Don's victorious tonight, three games to none. Back with more IPFW Volleyball in a moment right here on College 56 Sports. Do you have everything you need? Paper? Pencils? We only ask that you do your best. And make you a snack. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Welcome back once again to our post-match report. IPFW victorious tonight, getting a little payback, uh, defeating the Lewis Flyers three games to none. Final scores were 30 to 16, 30 to 16, 30 to 17, and what a treat it is for us now to chat with my old colleague, assistant coach Ryan Perrot. And first question I'm going to ask, Rock, is not over the victory tonight, but last Saturday night, IPFW defeated Clark right. and set a new school record with, at the time, 14 consecutive wins. You were a member of the 99 squad that won 13. Briefly, what was going through your mind when this team broke your record? You know, I told them, uh, I think it was at Ball State when they tied it, or maybe that Friday when they tied it, I told them they've earned it. You know, they have played really good volleyball, solid volleyball for the last month, and it seems like we're coming along, peaking at the right time of the year, and, you know, deep down, you know, you hate to see a part of you go by, but as somebody told me after the match, you know, you're still a part of this run, too, so I guess I could say that I'm part of the two best run streaks here at IPFW history. Or at least two of the three. Let's, <laughs> let's give a little credit to the 93 oh, team. Oh, yeah, no that's question, the original no record. question, but we're, we're playing really well right now, so. Let's talk about this match tonight. Steve and I talked during one of the, the commercial breaks trying to figure out the way you played here tonight. How did you lose to Lewis at Lewis back in January? They played very good volleyball, and we did not at the time. Uh, we had a different lineup on the floor uh, as compared to obviously what we had tonight. CJ was playing the left uh, at that particular match. Uh, we just we didn't play well, and I gave credit to Lewis the first match of the year because they played great backward defense. They extended the rallies, and we just never adjusted. We were close to winning. We made too many errors, and you know, yeah, there are a bunch of freshmen playing on that team, but they played with a lot of heart that night. They played with consistency, and we were flat. And you don't expect to win. It would have been an injustice for us had we beaten Lewis that first night because we were flat. We came out flat. We did not execute the way we have been the last month, and we had no business winning that match up in Lewis. Well, talk about tonight for a minute. Um, I asked Colin Lundin, so I'll ask you again. Have you guys gone to asking Colin to spread the offense out more? Because early on in this winning streak, a lot of, lot of matches won with CJ having far more kills than anyone else. And tonight, as you look at the stats, CJ 11 and the next, the rest of the hitters 7, 8, yeah. 9. No one, really, no one really was the leading attacker, so to speak. An equal distribution for sure. What has happened at the beginning of the year, we rode CJ a lot. Two reasons for that. Number one, obviously, he's a workhorse. I mean, his athletic ability on the right side is phenomenal. But number two is our passing has gotten so much better over the last month and a half to two months. Uh, Colin now has been able to distribute the volleyball to various players. Our left sides tonight, as you can see by the stats, played very good. 
that's a contribution because of our passing and how good and solid our passing has been the last month and a half to two months. That's probably why the biggest success, why Khan has been able to distribute the volleyball to several different players instead of just CJ, CJ, CJ all the time. How have Arnie and you and Mark and Denny been able to mold this team to have this fantastic ability to focus on the task at hand and not look ahead? You know, our game plan has been, I think, very, very good this year. We focus on ourselves more than we do our opponents because the only thing that you have control over is what your team does, not what the other team does. Uh, it is a difficult task, obviously. I thought there were a couple moments during tonight's match where you can tell we had some lapses, complacency set in for us. But we have tried to focus on ourselves and ourselves alone. Don't worry about what the other team is doing. We take care of our side of the floor, we will have a lot of success. And that's pretty much why the reason now 15 in a row for us. Well, let's look ahead to tomorrow night. Yeah. Back here at the Gates Center, Ohio State comes to town. They're playing Loyola tonight. We don't know the results right. of that match. Right. Uh, perhaps they'll play great and knock off Loyola, which would put us in first place, us being IPFW. But the Buckeyes are going to come to town. They remember what happened in Columbus a few weeks ago. They had control of the match 2 nothing, As you see there, we'll be back at 7 o'clock tomorrow night uh, here on Channel 56. But as you want to enjoy this win over Lewis. It was nice payback from losing there. But now you got to look ahead to Ohio State. So what, what are you and Arnie and the staff going to do now? Well, Ohio State has been in somewhat... Uh, a disarray in terms of their lineup. They have several different players playing several different positions. Injuries have been a factor to that throughout the season for them. We kind of know what to expect with their solid five, solid six to start. Again, same thing's going to take place tomorrow. Aggressive serving by us. If we can handle the ball, run our offense, same thing. Our blocking has been phenomenal all season. We lead the conference, obviously, in blocking. We'd like to pick up our area, obviously, in the backcourt, you know, play a little. We had a couple balls today where I thought we should we were in good position, should have dug the ball, went away. But the key again tomorrow is off to a quick start against Ohio State because I think they're the same team when mentally you have several different players playing several different positions. You don't want to get them in the rhythm. You want to keep them out of rhythm, so therefore you want to get on them right away so they don't have a chance to even get into tomorrow's match. And then, of course, when Loyola comes to town next Friday, that will obviously decide the conference championship most likely. Uh, but we're not looking ahead to that at all. That match will take care of itself. We think tomorrow's match also will take care of itself with Ohio State coming. That's a great rivalry for us. Second probably to Ball State. So I think tomorrow's match will take care of itself again. Worry about what we do. Don't worry about so much what they do. Again, thanks for coming over and spending some time with us. Enjoy the victory with the rest my of your pleasure. team. My pleasure. Thank you very much. You guys are doing a great job on 56. That is Ryan Perrot, my old buddy who worked with me for three years here doing IPFW Volleyball on Channel 56. We'll take one more break. When we come back, Steve and I will come back, give you the final numbers and final thoughts as well. Again, IPFW victorious tonight over Lewis, three games to none. Back with IPFW Volleyball in a moment right here on College 56 Sports. Pizza! Pizza! We must eat. No way. What is this? Capsicum M. Agaricus Bisporus. Huh? Allium Sepa. Can we eat it? Peppers, mushrooms, and onions. Eat your pizza, man. Honey. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Do you know IPFW has its very own pep band? The Stop Band is looking for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, stop. Arnie's Army is back. The Mastodons are on the move with the best volleyball action in the Midwest. The Dons have a seasoned veteran lineup ready to do battle with the big guns in Division I volleyball. It's time to take the offensive, settle some scores. Catch all the action of the next big volleyball battle at the Gate Center. Go Dons! Back at the Gates Center. Highlights of this victory over Lewis. Steve Florio, take it away. Well, what we're probably going to see here is 
a lot of different attacks by a lot of different players. And uh, that's what we were speaking to, speaking with uh, Colin Lundeen and Ryan Parrott about, is uh, how good the ball control on IPFW's side has been and how well they've been able to set multiple hitters so that they don't show any predictability of tendencies. He also mentioned that they're leading uh, the, me the MIVA in blocks, and uh, that showed tonight in 14 blocks. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw a highlight a few clips ago of a yes. block. And again, a big explosive kill there by CJ Macias. A tough serve, forcing an average pass. A big block by Sitcha. There's a tough pass right there. And again, allowing that was actually a uh, game match point right there. But uh, the tough passing was, was one of Lewis's problems tonight. Final team numbers IPFW doubling the kill amount of Lewis 46 to 23. The Dons hit 494. Lewis, 0, 0, 0. You remember a team hitting 0, 0, 0 for a match before, Steve? Uh, it doesn't happen very often, and that's what, that's what happens when a team is serving very tough and blocking very well. It's, you, they get you out of rhythm, they make you put up bad sets, and then they block them straight down. Assist, 39-20 feet, a three rather in favor of IPFW, 14-4 to four in blocks, 26-20 in uh, digs, both of those, the, the uh, team with the more numbers, or more numbers, I can't talk English right, <laughs> is IPFW, there's a potential volley down for a few years down the road, yep. briefly, individually, one player for each team in double figures and kills, CJ Macias for IPFW, Drew Pickering for Lewis, each with 11, Brock Ulrich, Josh Collins, seven apiece for the Dons. This is our upcoming schedule. Again, IPFW going to play host to Ohio State tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. We'll talk more about that in a moment. A week from tonight, April 7th, Loyola Chicago comes here. That could be shootout at the OK Corral. April 14th, Penn State. Uh, they're going to host the Final Four. It's here at 7 o'clock. And then April 15th, Senior night with Rutgers in town at 7 o'clock. Some really exciting matches. And the nice thing is, all four of those matches right here at the Hilliard Gate Sports Center. There's your boss there on the right, Kelly right. Hutton. Hutton. Uh, real briefly, Steve, again, uh, quickly, C.J. Macias with 11 kills, Colin Lundin with 35 assists, and the blocks. Two solo blocks and 24 team blocks equates to 14 blocks for IPFW team blocks. No solo blocks, eight block assists for Lewis, just four. Uh, and again, that's the strength of IPFW volleyball. Yeah, and I guess the key term right now for IPFW is balance. And it starts from the first contact. It starts from their pass. Their passing and their defense have been really good, especially, especially their passing. Passing that serve from the opponent, getting it into the hands of Lundin where he doesn't have to run around too much, and he has all his hitters ready there to set. He doesn't. He can distribute. He can fake out the other team, and they're not predictable, and they're tough to defend because of that. Well, now let's look ahead. This match is over with three nothing. Quick work done by the Dons tomorrow night. Ohio State comes to town. We've talked a little bit about it before, but now we can uh, take our full attention towards it. Buckeyes, not a bad team. I mean, they're four and two in the conference, and they're sixteen and seven overall. Entering their match with Loyola tonight, um, and as Ryan said. Take away Ball State. Ohio State is probably the next biggest match that IPFW has, and maybe we could see another 2,000 fan turnout here tomorrow night. I I would love to see that. It they're the seventh player on the floor for IPFW. There's no doubt about that. This crowd knows volleyball. They love volleyball, and when they get into it, the team rides that energy. I'd love to see 2,000 fans here. Final thoughts on this match tonight. Balance. It's fun to see a team so well balanced right now. Well, that basically says it all. The Dons, again, successful tonight. Want to uh, let you know upcoming events uh, besides volleyball. Former IPFW uh, baseball coach Tony Vittoria will bring his Dayton Flyers to town on April 4th for a 3 o'clock matchup with Billy Gernon's baseball team. On Thursday, April 6th, Keith Fisher's softball squad will play host to the Titans of the University of Detroit at 3 p.m. And... Uh, our next match, I should say the replay of tonight's match with Lewis will take place on Sunday, the day after tomorrow, April 2nd at 7 p.m. Again, tune in to Channel 56 Sunday, April 2nd, 7 p.m. for the replay of tonight's match with IPFW. Well, that's about it for us. At this time, we've got a lot of people to thank. 
Uh, first thing we want to do is thank Big Daddy's Pizza for feeding the bulk of our College 56 production crew here tonight. Tasty pizzas and more from Big Daddy's Pizza, locations at the Acme on East State, Clancy's on West Jefferson, and Big Daddy's on DuPont. We also want to thank the College 56 production crew, the IPFW athletic staff, the city of Fort Wayne, Comcast Cable Vision, the IPFW Learning Resource Center, and especially the IPFW Office of University Relations and Communications for their contributions to this College 56 Sports Telecast. This telecast of IPFW Sports is copyrighted and the sole property of the College Cable Access Center and IPFW. Unauthorized duplication, exhibition, rebroadcast, retransmission, or the use of this event without express written consent is strictly prohibited. We hope you've enjoyed this telecast of IPFW Sports, if not the outcome, and we thank you for joining us again this evening. For IPFW Women's Volleyball Assistant Coach Steve Floyer, this is Mike Moss saying so long for now. Once again, the 12th ranked IPFW Valley Dons victorious tonight. They improved their school record consecutive match winning streak to 15 in a row, downing the Lewis Flyers by scores of 30 to 16, 30 to 16, and 30 to 17. Until tomorrow night at 7 o'clock when Ohio State comes to town, we wish you a very pleasant evening as we bid you adieu now from the Hilliard Gate Sports Center right here on the campus of IPFW.